We're at about 75 kilometers altitude, so we won't feel much for another 20 or 30 seconds. EDL 63, EDL com. Let us know if you see any left hand circular polarized power. 53 copy. Are you seeing any, any signal at all on the frequency analyzer? That's a negative. Okay, keep your eyes glued and let us know if you see anything at all, please. I think I have a set of eyes watching it. Uh, we don't see it. Okay, Roger. Idiocom, Idiocom, 63. Idiocom. Yeah, FSR2 carrier spectrum. It shows something that it might just be noise. Can you concur on that? Uh, I see same, but it's uh, not at a frequency I would expect, so I think it's probably a noise spike. Okay, copy. From my vantage point, you know, having been with the project from the beginning, um, the success, the performance of this mission has been extraordinary. The hurdles we had to, to jump over throughout the development, all that pain has kind of faded and, uh, and we're really reflecting on, on how well everything worked. Uh, 38 months uh, from start of, of uh, the funding to launch and to do it within a fixed cost cap of $171 million for the, for the spacecraft, $25 for the rover, um, was, you know, looking back from the first vantage point we had back in, you know, in July of 93, think, thinking, this is going to be hard. This is going to be almost impossible. And there were a lot of people that said they won't even make it to the launch pad. We are a one-of-a-kind spacecraft. So to mitigate that risk, okay, being one of a kind spacecraft, and also the inherent additional risk of landing. There's no doubt about it that there is additional risk to this landing event. We, um, we built a robust design, but we tested the living daylights out of this design. The focus on Pathfinder was to assemble quickly and test, test, and test. We're going to cut the lander, the bomb before you. This sucker's going to take off. Yep. Oh, yeah. so you'll, you'll get your money's back. Follow up that drag chute, we're just going to hit never cut any part of the basic plan that we put in place. We, in fact, added things to the plan. We added tests. We added a lot of tests, actually. Air airbag tests, thermal tests, altimeter tests. Any place where we thought we needed more information or we wanted to assure the, the performance, we tested, and we tested a lot. <laughs> We 
had the, probably the longest uh, assembly test and launch operations phase of any project that I know of in which, in which you took half your total development time and dedicated it to, to system level testing. And that, of course, didn't include all the subsystem testing. So we, we tested, we test, test, test. That was really our mantra. It wasn't faster, better, cheaper. It was test, test, test. And I'd heard about this crazy mission. Some, some young people here at JPL, I thought they were a little nuts, came together and said, hey, let's, uh, what we're going to do is very, very simply, we're going to take this thing onto Mars and let it throw this big uh, this, uh, entry vehicle bullet in. The parachute's going to open up. Uh, some, uh, this lander is going to repel down this long rope. And it, some airbags are going to inflate. The thing's going to hit the ground, bounce, and open up like a flower. And this rover's going to drive off. And I go, really? I, th I thought they were nuts, actually. The Grand Coulee, which is the name for a dry canyon here, which was carved out by the catastrophic flood which occurred during late glacial times. At the time that this coulee was formed, the entire channel was filled with water. Now the reason we're here, of course, is that this channel is a very small scale feature on the Earth compared to the channel that is immediately upstream of the Mars Pathfinder landing site. Here you have this massive flood that's carried rocks from everywhere, from Idaho through uh, Washington, and deposited them in a small area that our Pathfinder rover and lander can explore. And the more different kinds of rocks we can see, the more we can learn about the planet. Hey, how can we verify that a site is safe, that doesn't have too many rocks, um, higher than a half a meter, which is what the airbags are designed to handle, uh, which, which corresponds to about a meter in diameter rock. And all we have to go on is uh, not too much. It's mostly what we call thermal inertia measurements, which give us an estimate of the total coverage of rocks that are greater than uh, one, uh, sorry, 10 centimeter uh, cubes. <laughs> and uh, you can see how many cubic rocks we have here. <laughs> uh, you guys were giving us a probability that at 28 meters per second, the chances of having a half meter rock are slim, you know, so slim that... I know, I know, I know, Tom, but, and it is, but when you talk about bouncing 10 times, you know, you're going to hit a half meter rock. Well, thing. we can put the half meter rocks back in. I think we should. It's all moss. That's moss. The thing that you know, what we're talking about here is that maybe the rock the number of rocks we're using are not, not enough. I mean, we just don't have enough rocks in the, the test, uh, the floor of the test chamber that we're using and that we either need to, to put some more rocks or we need to make them bigger or we need to do both. Yesterday we went to a site which is only about a half mile from here and uh, it, uh, it has probably 60-70% rocks of which a lot of the rocks are enormous, enormous rocks. So today we wanted to come to a place which is maybe a little more representative of where we might land and, and so now we're here in this area where maybe the rock distribution is more like 20 percent coverage. You know generally this field looks really good. It looks it fantastic. For well this is this is probably I don't know you think that's 20 percent rocks? Maybe a little less. Maybe a little less. So. The thing that's surprising is is how how closely separated we are from that. I mean you know that's only half mile away maybe and, and here we are you know, essentially the same distance from where the, the flood occurred and the rock distribution is totally different. So, so we're concerned, I think, or we're gonna, gonna think some more about, you know, how we should be testing the, the airbag system um, given this sort of potential variation in the, the rocks.